Michael Bisbing and Dan Henderson are both legends of the MMA world. Bisbing is a true UFC pioneer with a notorious tendency to polarize people with his trash-talking loudmouth. Who wants to see Hendo get knocked the F out? Come on, make some noise! You look like a fucking idiot! Where'd you get that jacket, man? You like it? No, it sucks. All the needles in your ass, all the steroids will not help you, you pussy! Look at that look at his face, like he's got a, a secret, like he knows. You don't know shit, pal. You don't know shit. George is a fucking pussy. That's my thought. If you thought I was a pain in the ass before, you got no idea what you're in store for. While Henderson is an Olympian wrestler from Downey, California, who held championship titles in all major MMA promotions. The two have been quite public about their dislike for each other. Dan Henderson is famous for one thing. That's knocking me out of UFC 100. I made your career, Dan. But where did the bad blood originate from? So let's start with Michael the Count Bisping. Even as a retired fighter, Bisping is still very much involved with all things MMA, acting as a sports analyst, commentator, and podcaster. Dominic Cruz couldn't KO my 14-year-old <laughs> son, okay? He likes to run his mouth, which makes him a hugely charismatic and popular TV personality. And to his credit, he is extremely entertaining. Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on. Ironically, this is also the same reason that earned him a reputation as a difficult character to get along with. <laughs> From opponents like Anderson Silva and GSP. I was expecting some more you douchebags to have the fucking headbands on from Karate Kid today. Where are you all? Where are the GSP fans? To people who are never going to clash with him, like Jorge Masvidal. Go away, you punk bitch. Look at you. You are a punk. You are a bad representation of this sport. Look at you, fucking trash punk. Nobody is safe from the count. I couldn't really care less what some nerds on the internet think. Truth be told, Bisbing does come across as a bit of a jerk at times, with his arrogant attitude. Someone shut this dickhead up over here. Mate, you're going down, pal. Fuck you. Fuck Henderson. Manchester, let's fucking do this. Fuck you. But as a spectator, I have to admit, he is a funny guy. I hate people. I hate people that do this on Instagram. So go fuck yourself, Coach Watson. Go fuck yourself. That said, he's been described as one of the most hated men in the UFC on more than one occasion. You can kiss my ass. Dan Henderson, by comparison, is a far more quiet and mild-mannered man. That's not to say he never trash talks. John Jones, for example famously tweeted that he felt disrespected by some of Henderson's comments leading up to their fight in 2012, assuring his fans that this had given him extra motivation to train for the fight. Still, compared to most fighters, Henderson's trash-talking is far less verbose and far less frequent. For Bisping, however, Hendo has gone out of his way. There are a plethora of online comments insulting Michael, from his physique and potential insinuation of drug cheating to his fighting ability, to his commentary. It took a lot to get Dan to this point, but the feud is real. I wish they judged the fight on how you look after the fight. For those old enough to remember it, 2009 was a glorious year. Obama was sworn in as the 44th president of the United States of America. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, died. Reporting that Michael Jackson has died. And Kanye West infamously interrupted Taylor Swift during her VMA Video of the Year acceptance speech. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best. Above all, 2009 was the year where, for the first time in history of the reality show The Ultimate Fighter, country against country was being matched up Team UK versus Team USA. Bisping and Henderson were selected as the respective coaches for the season's teams. It was as nice as I expected it to be. The Ultimate Fighter is, roughly speaking, a breeding ground for grudges and resentment. From Chael Sonnen and Vanderlei Silva to Rampage Jackson versus Rashad Evans, it's not often that people emerge from the show on good terms. Very few coaches come out of The Ultimate Fighter as friends. And Bisbing and Henderson were no different. At the time, Bisbing was already known to be a trash talker but he somehow turned his obnoxiousness up to 11 against the normally quiet Henderson. When things don't go his way, he just throws a little hissy fit, temper tantrum, and, you know, I've got little kids, and, and I see the same thing out of them. And the trash talking only got worse when the British team dominated the American squad. <laughs> Keep in mind, 
Heading into the Tough House, Henderson was established as a former two-weight Pride champion and was widely recognized as a Hall of Fame-worthy talent. Meanwhile, Bisbing was still mostly perceived as a young fighter who had a long way to go in order to truly prove himself. It's no surprise then that Henderson felt the need to shut him up. The two coaches were given the opportunity to face off against each other inside the octagon at UFC 100. It was at the time the biggest card in UFC history, UFC 100. After a back and forth first frame, the former Pride champion knocked out the Brit in the second round with a devastating right hand that was heralded as one of the greatest knockouts in the history of the sport. The victory won Henderson a knockout of the night bonus as well as knockout of the year in numerous media organizations. You, you said coming into this fight you wanted to shut him up. Mission accomplished. Yeah, I, I believe I uh, accomplished that for a little while. However, following the overhand right, Henderson landed a devastating elbow to Bisbing's face, which many deemed unnecessary and overly violent as Bisbing was lying unconscious on the ground. He's still out cold, Mike. When asked why he did it, Henderson responded that he wanted to shut him up a little bit adding that the strike felt good. To his credit, Bisbing did not hold an explicit grudge against Henderson for the second strike. It's commonly accepted that you keep going until the ref says stop, and that's just what Dan did. Those who criticize Henderson are by and large not competitors or heavily involved in the sport. Nonetheless, Bisbing did talk about the difficulty of returning to competition after that and the nerves in his next bout. Knockouts like that change people, and in addition, Bisbing has voiced his issues with those whom he has seen as drug cheats, and has taken the damage caused by such cheaters a lot more personally. Yes. When testosterone replacement therapy became a thing, and all you had to do was go to your doctor and said, hey, you know, I can't get a hard on or whatever, and all of a sudden they sign you off well, on TRT. Worse. <coughs> no, I know. Even worse, you could take steroids first and then come off of it so your testosterone was low. Oh, really? And you go to a doctor and say, I have low testosterone. Oh, of course, yeah, because it messes up your natural yes. production of it. This is what of guys course. did. Guys right. took steroids and then went in afterwards and said they have low testosterone mm. because they were on steroids. More of that in just a second. It was a long time later that Bisping and Henderson fought again. Fred Flintstone's gonna get knocked out. In a weird twist of fate, while Michael Bisping was fighting Luke Rockhold in the main event of UFC 199 back in 2016, his former foe Dan Henderson was also on the card. While the Count was a massive underdog to the UFC middleweight champion, Hendo was also a big underdog against the explosive Hector Lombard. It was a night for the underdogs. Henderson pulled off an incredible comeback knockout over Lombard. However, what stole headlines was Bisbing knocking out Rockhold in one of the biggest upsets in MMA history, winning the middleweight championship against all odds. It, it, one of the best feelings in, in the world. I, I heard what people always said about me, do you know what I mean? So to, to win like that in style, yeah, felt Look amazing. Bisping's first title defense took place in front of his home crowd in England at UFC 204. His opponent was none other than you know it, Dan Henderson. Despite coming in at 46 years old, the former Pride champion still had one of the best right hands in the game. Early in the contest, Bisping got hit with a massive right hand again. Nearly seven years after their first bout, it looked like history was going to repeat itself. However, the champion persevered through that knockdown, and even another second round knockdown. Although he ultimately won the match, Bisbing was admittedly the far more damaged of the two, being dropped twice in the fight and coming out of it looking like he'd been hit by a train. I wish they judged the fight on how you look after the fight. However, he retained his title, and Henderson announced his retirement. I appreciate all the support throughout the years, worldwide. You know, and thank you to Michael Bisbee for giving me this opportunity. Oh, the grill master. 
You would imagine that with both fighters now retired, it should be time to put this feud to rest. <laughs> I don't know what I'm laughing at. But nonetheless, the disagreements still continue. Bisming has criticized Henderson frequently for being a drug cheat. The Brit, generally speaking, has been very vocal about drug cheats in the sport, often commenting on those exploiting the testosterone replacement therapy loophole that used to exist. You hear all these people talking about testosterone replacement therapy. If you've got to get your testosterone replaced, I think you're in the wrong sport, for one. Um, I'm not a doctor, I know very little about it, but I would say that alpha males, you know, don't have low testosterone. I know I certainly don't, but I think that's why we get into an octagon or a cage and fight, because we're alpha males. And if you had low levels of testosterone, you'd probably be walking around with a purse and a handbag and wearing a dress. Henderson was indeed one of the fighters who benefited from TRT. However, it's important to note that he did so at a time when this practice was still legal. He also claims that it was a therapeutic dose and was never formally condemned by the UFC. It was reported that this is something that you take, but always, you know, under the limits and you're always, you know, kosher, so to speak. You know, I just know that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always real careful and, and not doing anything that I shouldn't be doing. However, Henderson has also accused Bisbing of being a drug cheat himself. Although Bisbing never admitted using TRT or any other performance enhancement drug. I've never used a steroid in my life. I've never failed a steroid test. Hoping to hurt his pride, Henderson has also often insulted Bisping on Twitter, accusing him of being a horrible UFC commentator and a poor sports analyst. Bisping's response was that Henderson was fading into obscurity anyway. Old man Henderson, good luck, God bless him. Broadly speaking, there's still bad blood between the two, and it's hard to see this hatchet being buried anytime soon. Worry, I'm gonna kiss you with this. I got a real